So that's the uh, 2.0 version of the very first IPA that I brewed on my my all electric system. Um, the haze is not intended. Um, I'm thinking it's going to clear up. It's the same green bill as what I used in the first beer. Um, except this one's hazy. I, I don't know. It's the unintentional haze bomb. But um, yeah. It's got huge citrus on it, on the nose. Just a ton of citrus. Almost like a little bit of um, like candy in the background. <sighs> Smooth. Bitter. This is pretty high IBU on this. But the only thing I got in here I'd make this any kind of haze bomb would be the oats, but it's the same grist as I used before. But, um, yeah. It's pretty good. Alright, guys. Um, Tuesday night, so tomorrow's Homebrew Wednesday! Wednesday! Alright, this is all, by the way. Um, about 6%, just a tick under 6%. Efficiency issues, alright. Well, um,. Look at that. Talk about what's in that dat in a second. All right, so I brewed Saturday morning. Um, got up, I was down here. I um, was heating up strike water by 6.30ish in the morning. So I was done, say, I don't know, one o'clock. I was done, cleaned up upstairs, sitting on my butt waiting to go drink some beers at a friend's house. Um, so, yeah. Um, could grab something real quick. Oh, let me see if I got it in here. Doubt it. But um, anyway, well, fuck it. Um, so last week I um, said my uh, CO2 tank it uh, emptied, and I found out why. Is the uh, pressure relief valve on the secondary regulator? I've got a dual regulator. Um, dual. Yeah, you know what I mean. But anyway, there's two regulators on this, and. The second one that I used to force carbon and all that stuff, the uh, pressure um, valve went to shit on me. So, you know, I got lucky that it, um, it, it, it held a few PSI worth of uh, CO2 because I could put gas on top of this because I kegged it. That's when I found out that I was empty. I kegged this one and I went to go ahead and purge, purge the oxygen out of it. And it wasn't any there. So, anyway. I ordered one, I ordered two off of Amazon, and I got those, put the new one on, um, everything's fine, and my second, I had my old single stage regulator, um, I used that to go ahead and force carb this uh, while I was waiting, so, anyway, all is well, all is well, um, so yeah, a little $6 part, so I went ahead and I got two, um, just in case, since that, that um, dual stage regulator's got two uh, pressure relief valves on there, but anyway, so I got that done, got that fixed. Um, I got my 10 inch pulley today in the mail for my my grain mill motor project. So that's all done. I had to get a little uh, little coupler um, to go from a 3 8 shaft to a 3 quarter inch shaft. Um, the idea of the pulley is 3 quarters. Um, the shaft on the grain mill is 10 millimeters which is just slightly over 3 8 so I, I took the um, took the coupler, which is 3 8 ID. Um, I think I ran a Y drill through it, which is um, say 0.39, so, and that, that puts me right at, what, 10, that's about 10 millimeters, it's 0.39. So anyway, everything's great. Uh, so now I just gotta build the box, uh, figure out my electrics. I got the uh, motor in the mail. Um, so I've got a, get a little bit of electrical done, which isn't much. This thing is, it's old. Um, you've got two wires. Um, if you want to go forward, you wire it one way. You want to go backwards, so we'll say clockwise, you'll wire it one way. You want to go counterclockwise, you, you switch two wires, and it goes counterclockwise. So, <clears throat> so I've got to get that done and build a box. So yeah, I and mean, everything's pretty much there. Probably got another uh, few 10 or 15 bucks worth of materials I need to buy. I've got enough wire from wiring that electrical box um, panel uh, 
inside with a little binding wire. Um, so I got all that done. Um, so yeah, I brewed the uh, dual hop, you know, dual grain triple hop experiment beer that's uh, being thrown by the one and only Mr. Mike Dean. So that's in there. Um, yeah, I used my um, my efficiency. <clears throat> so I keep jumping around. Oh, look, something shiny. My fish is just not what I think it should be. It's probably it's in the low 70s. Why is that? I don't know. Um, but I bought 10 pounds of rice hulls. So I'm going to start using rice hulls. Let me go grab one of those bags. This is a pound. This is a pound of rice hulls. A pound. So I got 10 pounds, so I've got 10 of these over there. Why? I usually put about a pound. If I'm doing, if I'm going to brew and I've got something that I'm worried about sticking in sparge, I usually do a pound. This is a pound. Did I mention that this is a pound? A pound of rice hulls. So, anyway, in this, this is the pressure relief valve. If you guys don't know what I was talking about, but anyway, yeah. This is the second one that I bought. So it's a quarter 20 thread, um, a quarter MPT thread, sorry. That's different, not a quarter 20, it's a quarter MPT. It's a different diameter. Um, so yeah, now I've got 10 pounds of rice holes. So, this I forgot to mention. That's pretty good. So, um, during the course of the brew day, simple, easy brew day, I never had, I didn't have any issues. Um, the um, my new crush, my I, I set at 035, and um, it didn't stick in the mash tun. It would recirculate, but for the first, I don't know, probably 45 minutes or so. I had the valves wide open and it was barely rotating, which means it's not really, it's not really pumping through that fast, right? The volume's down because there's obviously it's not it's not going through the grain bed as, as fast. Um, towards the end, it, it started speeding up towards the end, but at that point, you know, conversion's done within the first you know 30 minutes or so, so it really is just you know whatever. But anyway, um, so. I think I'm going to try to maintain the crush and just start using rice hulls. These, this, these were about two bucks a pound. That's shit, which is more expensive than I can get at my local homebrew shop. But anymore, um, you know, I, I don't go there much. I go get greens, specialty greens. I right now I'm down to my last 50 pound uh, sack of grain, so I'll be stopping there at some point, and within the next few weeks to get another sack of grain, uh, but you know, I don't get hops from there unless unless there's something there that I need, but I buy most of my hops from the internet, which I presume most people do. Um, so, anyway, um, yeah, so the, the brew day went great. I thought I was going to have pretty good efficiency. Um, I bumped my, bumped my efficiency percentage in Bruce Smith. Um, I think I, I had it set at 72, and I think I bumped it up to 75, because this was going to be a crapshoot for me. Um, I didn't know. I, I, I figured I was going to get really good efficiency since I'm using the new mill and the smaller gap. <clears throat> but um, beer should have been 1080 going into the fermenter. It was 1070 going into the fermenter, which I mean, it's going to make a big beer anyway, uh, big enough. Not, not quite the 8%, 8.2% or whatever that Mike wants. Um, but it'll be it'll be close to eight percent. It'll be seven. If it attenuates down, well, it should be like seven point seven or something like that. Um. So that went. And I can't complain. Everything went well. Maybe I don't know. I guess it's got really spoiled my cable system for whatever reason. I just got better efficiency with my cable system. I don't know why. 
don't know why that is. Um, but I don't know if it has anything to do with the uh, the shape of the, the cable butt base. You know, it's pulling from the center of the cable and out. I don't know. These are flat bottoms. And maybe maybe that's what it is. I I don't know. But anyway, I'm kind of chasing my tail with that. So um, so I, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna end up just um, adjusting my efficiency uh, percentage in beer in beer smith and just going with more base malt try and make up for it. Um, I have 15 gallon kettles so I shouldn't have any issue with um, size as far as getting pounds of grain for a five gallon batch unless I'm making you know some barley wine or Russian imperial stout where the, the, the gravity going into the fermenter is like 1.1 1 .1, you know but then I don't know just little things I need to get worked out with my system. Um, so I got the, um, I used my, my little aquarium pump today, uh, Saturday. Um, I, I used my ground temp water to go ahead and get down to about 90. So then from that point, I had a five gallon bucket and I created an ice bath um, around that pump. I bought one of those big 20 pound bags of ice <clears throat> and dumped that in there and, and filled it with water. Um, then you know, started the pumping, I recirculated from the wort from the water in my counter flow and ran a line back into the bucket so it was just recirculating nice water and uh, it brought the temperature down to um, about 68 in a little over 20 minutes I would say so the only thing is I wish that pump had a little bit more a little more oomph um, it, the thing is only about 130 gallons per minute so yeah it'd be nice I maybe should have thought about that when I bought it but you know for six dollars shipped I, I can't, I'm not complaining you know I got six dollars into it because everything else I had here um, maybe down the road you can buy them that are 500 or so gallons per minute which would been better I would think but it might work what I, exactly what I needed to do and it worked um, so yeah got that I got the let's see there's six or so gallons sitting in there and um, yeah, right now it's sitting at 68 degrees, just a smidge below 68. Um, so Monday, I went ahead and I popped it with some Simcoe, an ounce and a half of Simcoe. And that's, so obviously Saturday, Sunday, Monday is the third day of active fermentation. So I'm doing a little new school hoppage with some old school hops. So we'll see how all that turns out. Um, so yeah, I've got, I'll probably let it go for another week or two. And I'll dry hop it with another ounce and a half or two Simcoe. I'll crash it, keg it, get it bottled up, send it out the mic. Um, so yeah, I think that pretty much kind of covers it. Um, nothing really to talk about. What's going on? Um, at a brew day. Successful brew day. My numbers weren't what I wanted, but the process was down. Everything was great. Um, yeah, so anyway guys, that's it. Um, hopefully here in a few weeks I'll start this uh, motorized grain mill build and uh, take you guys on a journey. All right guys, peace, cheer. So, just about the end of my mash. Um, you see everything's running pretty clear. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've used, first time I've used my new mill. I set it to 035 and um, See my temps there, so yeah, I'm about ready to start ramping up for mash out. But um, it took a long time for this thing to clear up. Took a long time for the pump to start really pushing it through. Um, so maybe maybe it's a little too fine for my system. But um, I got on the Amazon's and I bought a uh, 10 pound bag of rice holes. So anyway, I'll probably just keep the gap because um I mean, it's not it's not stuff but i'm just just scared but anyway all right guys that's a uh, update for now. first top edition um so that's an ounce and a half of um newport so um right now i got about an eight and a quarter gallon in there and my free boil is just under 1060 uh, about 1058 10 somewhere around there uh, a little lower than beer smith says but i'm going to crank up my uh, boil percentage up to 70 and we'll uh, see what happens and I'll check it with the last 10 minutes or so. If it's not where I need to be, I'll just uh, crank up the uh, boil percentage. All right, 
That's it. Fucking hot break has been a beast the last two brews. Jeez. Got 16 minutes left in the boil. Um, I'm about ready to do my 15 minute edition. Then I've got a um, 10 minute edition. And I'm going to do a Whirlpool edition. So um, these are fairly high alpha hops. And I only got four ounces. So I'm going to do one at 15, one at 10. I'm going to do two at Whirlpool. Hopefully, hopefully that's enough. I think I might screw myself. But anyway, um, yeah. Still, I think it's going to be a good beer. Well, I've got the, the aquarium pump in the bottom of the ice bath, and um, it's pumping water. It's, it's cooling things down. Um, I'm just concerned it doesn't have enough oomph, enough ass to push enough water through there uh, to work a little bit more effective, a little more efficient than what it is. Um, right now, it's down to 80 degrees. I started at um, 90, so it's dropped it down 10 degrees in probably maybe 10 minutes, maybe more, but um, yeah, I think... I think I need a little bit more ass uh, to kind of push a little bit more water through here, but um, still, I can't complain it's better than what I had, because um, at this point, I would have been done, I, I couldn't get any lower than about 85 with my current groundwater temp, so anyway, I was uh, continuing, uh, push forward, cheers guys.